using CNC design software can be a little bit intimidating. In my previous video, I showed you how to set up Carbide Create for the first time. Today, we're going to actually design a cutout for your CNC machine. I'm going to go step by step through the process so that you can get started easily and not be confused and intimidated by the process. So let's get started. So in my previous video, I just showed you how to get the workspace set up in Carbide Create. Now we're actually going to create something. So um, Valentine's Day is coming up. So I'm going to actually uh, make a little heart that's going to look like the candy hearts. Um, and, and we'll use that as an example for... Um, what you can do with this with with this software and how to use some of the features. So, uh, the first thing I want to do, I downloaded a heart off of uh, the internet, and I am going to use that image using this trace image um, button right here. And I'm going to grab the heart there that I um, that the I'm going to get the heart that I downloaded and it brings up this image tracing screen now this is actually you can adjust the threshold and that just adjusts how how detailed it is um and some of these other features you probably don't need to to do this unless the image isn't showing up quite right and then all you have to do is hit trace image and now you see there's a red line around it and <clears throat> It should be good, so I'll hit OK, and there it does. It goes, it just brings it right into the drawing or into the, the design area. Now, this looks a little bit too big. Uh, I'm going to shrink the height down to, let's say, 9 inches. And now I'm um, just a few other things you can do. I want to center this on here, so I'm going to align. And it's aligning the stock, and I'm just going to click here so it aligns to center, top to bottom, and left to right. And so that heart is dead center in the workspace. Now, I'm going to put some text in here. And um, I think what I'm going to do is make it say, be mine. I think that's a standard thing for these candy hearts and I think I want some kind of a typeface that looks like a typewriter so what we'll, we'll try cur courier and I want to change the height to let's see what 1.5 inches looks like That's not too bad. So that's going to be B, and then I'm going to do another one. Oops. And I'm going to do another one. It's going to say mine. And the height is right, the font's right, so it continued exactly what I had just done previously. And I'm going to hit done. And I want those to be centered. So I'm actually going to select both of them. I'm going to align them left to right first. So, so those two are now centered on each other. All right. And if I wanted to change the spacing between them, I would do that right now. I like how the spacing is. So I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to group them together. So... One thing you want to do is decide the height that you want this at. I think it should be, it doesn't want to be down here. This would be like center of the page. I want it to be a little bit higher on the heart, somewhere in there. And now I just need it to be aligned left to right. And the way I'm going to do that is just 
by because the heart is already centered on the page i'm just going to go align centers and hit this and it shifted it over a little bit to line it up to the center of the page so now we have the heart we have the lettering I now want to go to tool paths. So I'm going to create a tool path. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut out the words. So I'm going to select those. And I want to use one of my V-bits. Uh, V-bit looks more like it's carved. Uh, I like to use it for lettering. It looks really nice. You wouldn't have to. Um, but if you don't, you'd have to make sure you have a bit that's small enough that it'll get down in all those little grooves. Um, so you get a lot more detail when you use a V-carve. V so, and also, like, anytime you have a corner that's squared off, which this lettering, maybe like the corner of the, the dot above the eye would be squared off, the V-groove um, will square those off. If you don't have a V-groove, it's going to be rounded because the bit is round so um, or at least it'll have the appearance of it being squared off so because they can use that that point that's on the bit so I'm gonna do a V carve would you like to use the currently selected items or select by layer we're gonna use the current selection now this is where your bit comes into play and in the previous video I talked about going in and setting up your tools so um, All right, so here's where you would select your tools. Um, I don't actually have my tool library set up on this computer because it's my home computer that's not connected to the machine. So uh, if I were cutting this out and I designed this at my shop, this is where under tools today is where my bits would be and I would go to the V-mill and select the V-mill bit that I want to use. Uh, because I don't have that, I'm just going to go and I'm probably going to cut this out of pine so I'm going to go to softwood that are the pre-curated ones. And I'm just going to pick a 60 degree V. And I had already preset, it already has the preset feeds and speeds. And I usually leave this, this stuff, whatever it is by default, um, you can change it if you want, but for lettering, I think it's fine how it is. So this is called V Carve Toolpath Number One. I'm just gonna hit OK, and you can see right here the blue line is what's gonna get cut out. So if I wanted to see what this is gonna look like, I can click Show Simulation. Right now, all it has is the lettering, and Sometimes it's hard to see when you do this, so I, sometimes I'll take this show toolpath off just to make sure everything looks okay um, and how I wanted it to look. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to hide that simulation again. Now, I want to cut out the heart. So I'm going to do a contour this time. Contour is going to go around a shape. Use current selection. And... I want to use my, I think I want to use my eighth inch bit. Uh, the, the larger the diameter, the less detail you'll have in corners. So the only problem with using an eighth inch bit is the, the top of the heart is going to have a rounded look, as you can see right here in this blue line. So you can avoid that. If I wanted to change that to a sixteenth, I could. Um... So here's a 16th, and it reduces how much of a round, but it's still going to be round. Uh, the problem with the 16th is it takes longer to cut, and there's a lot higher chance of breakage of the bit, which I want to avoid at all costs. I want to go back to the 8th inch. I'm happy with just going with an 8th inch. All right, so... I've selected the tool. Now, the next thing you want to do, I'm going to cut this entire heart out. So if you're going to be doing that, the best thing to do is click right here, use stock bottom. Assuming that this P 
piece was a half inch, it's going to go down to 0 0.502 as the depth. And I must have had that set as my thickness. So um, we're just going to leave it at that. You would want to change that if your stock bottom was anything different. I found it's actually a little bit, it's better to go a little deeper than what the thickness is because for some reason when you set up the depth or the zero on the top surface of the board sometimes uh, when it cuts down through it doesn't quite get through and then you either have to sand the back side you have a few issues so um, if you if you set a little bit deeper it's going to cut into your spoil board but it saves you a lot of work at the end too um, because then you don't have to figure out exactly where the cut is when removing it from the uh, board so we're going to use stock bottom now it asks you where you want to cut this Do you want to cut on the inside or the outside i if i'm cutting a shape out i always cut it on the outside there you can see outside cut um and then that's the cut right there so i'm gonna hit okay so we have two different cuts. Now we have a tool change here. So the way you have to handle the tool change, and this took me a little bit to figure out, is you have to create another group. So one group, one group is going to be for your V-carve. The other group is going to be for your um, contour. Now, the only other thing we got to do is we have to set some tabs for this. So when you're cutting something out, and uh, we, we're going to have a board that's 12 by 12, I believe. 12 by 12. So when you're cutting something out, uh, you have to make it so that the, the workpiece, whatever you're cutting out, remains attached to the outer part. If you don't, once that cuts through, it's going to move around inside there and most likely it's going to break your bit because it'll bounce against your bit and it'll snap it or it'll mess up uh, what you just cut out. So we have to go back to the design and I'm going to click on the, the heart and I'm going to add in some tabs. So you go to the edit tabs. And I just want it, I want to create a few, and those tabs are just going to hold it in place. And then you cut those away and just do a little bit of sanding and you never notice them. Uh, I like to put them on places that they're easy to sand out. So outside curves are easy to sand. Inside curves are not easy to sand. So as this comes down towards this V, it gets a lot more difficult to sand them out. Also, this, this looks like this heart's kind of bending back out. That's kind of an outer curve or an inside curve. I would avoid that. So I think a tab here, maybe a tab up here, somewhere up here, and somewhere down here. And that should be plenty to hold that whole thing in place so that it doesn't break. If you didn't like one of the tabs, you can click on them and they disappear. So if you wanted to move it to a different spot, that's all you have to do. I'm going to hit OK. Go back into the tool paths. And I want to show the simulation again. You're going to see it's going to cut out the whole way through. And you can see the tabs are already pre-planned right in here that will hold it together until you're done. So then once you, would, you cut this out, you would just go um, cut those off and and it'll look like a heart again so that's what we're gonna do and it's pretty simple and that's about it so I'm gonna hit save tool paths actually I need to save this file first so save let's call it uh, Valentine heart or candy heart And I'm just going to save it to my desktop so that I can grab it and take it over to my shop. And then I'm going to save tool paths. And you can choose to save the tool paths in the file. So I'm going to do that. And 
that's all you do. It is a little bit intimidating when you first start using it, but it really, once you get into it, it's not that hard. And honestly, they've made a lot of improvements since I first started using the software. I don't believe you could bring that image in before and trace it. So you used to have to go create a, what's called an SVG file, and you'd have to use a different software, and it was uh, a lot of steps, and wasn't easy to do. But this is a lot easier. They have a lot of new features. Um, it works really well, and it's not too hard to learn. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, throw them down there in that comment section. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe button. And we're going to bring more content to you that should be helpful in the future. Uh, I aim to bring out another video next week on how to actually set the machine up and cut out what we just designed today. So stay tuned and catch that video, and we'll see you next time.